All right, so he was interviewed by um, Steve Ashburner in Chicago. I don't know if this was like during the pre-draft camp or whatever the case may be, but he had some interesting tidbits on Julius and how he's going to utilize him. And so I'm going to read some of this and, and let's react to it. He was asked about how he plans, how he hopes to carry over last season's playoff success and exposure. And Tibbs talked about the fact that he likes the versatility of this team where we can play smaller at times because of OG's ability to guard big. He also said Julius and Josh Hart can guard big as well. Then he said, in regards to Julius, he said, because you know, obviously the center position is going to be a question mark, Tibbs says we will probably do it by committee. We'll look at some different things because we have versatility. We could see Julius more at the five. I don't want to do that for long stretches. It would take its toll. But to have him for 10 to 15 minutes, I think he can do it well and create some offensive advantages. Your take on that. I love everything that Tibbs said. And it just goes to show you, Tibbs can evolve. Everybody always get all Nick fans and even Bulls fans from the past got hard on Tibbs because he doesn't, he's not malleable, right? He only plays his guys and he's still... I think the opposite is true, especially with development of younger players like Miles McBride to be a perfect example of taking a guy who is a second round pick and developing him into a real rotational player. I love hearing that. I do agree, like maybe not long stretches because you still want rim protection. Rim protection is important. And that's what Hartenstein was so good at when Mitch went down. Look, the thing I'm most excited about is the about having Randall back is the three point shooting that he creates because, you know, Brunson, who was getting a lot of catch and shoot threes while Randall was around, open catch and shoot threes. And he yeah. was shooting, I think, over 50% from three. And then those numbers dwindled down as it was more off the dribble and he was the main creator. I just, I just think there's going to be open three point shooters all day long. So, yes, I do think we can do that. Everyone can guard bigger. Yeah, I, I look to me. The thing that killed the Knicks last year was depth and health, right? Yeah. I'm fully confident. And, and I know. Knicks fans get trolled for saying, if we were healthy, we would have went to the Eastern Conference. To me, it's a foregone conclusion if we were healthy, we were going to the Eastern Conference Finals. No disrespect for the to the Pacers, who had the best shooting performance in Game 7 I think I've ever seen in a playoff game. But health and depth now, I think, is is and maintaining that for the regular season. He is going to have to go into that bench. And yeah, I think it's going to be less of Randall playing 38 minutes, minutes a game and Brunson playing 40 a game. I just think it's going to really try to be equal distribution of minutes going into the playoffs. Yeah. kind of did run them into the ground a little bit, but it was out of necessity. For sure. And they were able to address that depth, I think, for the most part at certain positions, especially this season. But uh, what I like about that is Tibbs showing, like you said, his ability, his willingness to adapt. And yeah. that may be, you know, that may have led to how the organization is going about handling the center rotation because they haven't yet acted with a sense of desperation saying, you know, we need another guy. We need another guy. Yes. They brought precious back, which I thought was a necessity. You have Ariel Huck Porty on the two way deal. You know, maybe they give him some time to, to develop, but they haven't yet like just use one of those conditional picks or anything like that to go get a guy. Maybe they go out there and, and address it at the trade deadline. But what it seems like what Tibbs is saying is that, they won't necessarily be afraid to go small in certain circumstances where it kind of gives them advantages. And, you know, if you look around the league right now, I mean, let's say these guys are all going in healthy. First game of the season, I would be going with this. With Boston, no Porzingis. You got yeah. Horford out there. Behind him might be Xavier Tillman, might be Luke Cornett. I'd be going right at those guys with Randall at the five. And look, how many teams last year had the luxury that the Knicks had having two centers like Robinson and Hartenstein, right? That yeah. was a luxury. That was a strength. That was part of the Knicks' identity. So you look around the NBA, there's not a whole lot of teams that could either have Mitch or Iheart on the floor throughout the whole game. And obviously injuries factored into that. Losing Hartenstein, like I said, will be a big deal. But yeah, I, I just don't think that we have that luxury because we took that money and we spent it on OG and Bridges. So we clearly have a different identity, but I don't think it's going to be one that's going to be so different from what we did. If you look at how well, and I think what makes Tibbs comfortable probably saying what he said was, OG guarded Embiid during right. stretches and did a good job. You could say, all right, Embiid's on one knee or whatever. The guy still dropped 50 in the playoff game. And then, you know, next round, you look at what the Pacers brought. Look, Miles Turner obviously plays big. He's a great rim protector, but he was pretty much, and he had some thunderous dunks. 
but most of his damage was from the perimeter. Yeah. So yeah. I do think when you start looking around in the East, you can match up and go small with the fact that our wings are so big. So I, I love everything yeah. I heard. And yeah, maybe they add something at the trade deadline. Maybe they don't, but we have lots of flexibility in yeah. that. Now, some Knicks fans to the contrary might might cringe when they hear that to say put put OG at the five, an injury prone player. You got Julius coming off a shoulder surgery, so <laughs> we'll see. Where right, but Tibbs you know who, with that option. Right, who we look? We know when it comes playoff time. Like, who, who are we really going to see? We're gonna, you know, this yeah. is like no disrespect to Paul Reed who ran his mouth in the series. We didn't see a whole lot of Paul Reed in the playoffs, and Embiid was hurt. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want to run OG out at center and get him injured. But look around at the backup centers, and we've looked. I mean, I don't know. I I, st- I just want to win, man. I just want to win.